What up, what up, Wimbush here. And my friend Sam over at Rococo was recently telling me that Rococo Studio just went through an overhaul. So you're gonna be able to get better motion capture and better motion smoothing all within Rococo Studio. So I figured what better time to take my Rococo Studio suit out and run it through his paces. So with Rococo Preview plus the Rococo Overhaul, you can actually blend them together to get the best results. So without further ado, Let's jump right into it. So as I'm putting my Rococo suit on, I want to show everybody how I get the best results that I can when I'm using the Rococo Studio. I actually used this whenever I was recording Mixmaster Mike from the Beastie Boys when he was on the turntables. So the best way that I'm able to get the best results or at least give myself the chance of getting the best results is get a dedicated router. So this one, I'll leave a link down below. I got it off of Amazon. It was around 40 to 50 bucks, I want to say. But the way that I use this is I'll take my Dell laptop and I'll hook it directly into the router and so there's no type of internet interference whatsoever. That router is only gonna be speaking to my smart suit, which that's gonna give me the best results because there's gonna be no interference between any other device that I have in my house. So after getting everything updated with my suit and my gloves, now it's time to do some motion capture. And with shout out to my boy Zero, he actually 3D printed this light gun zapper, reminiscent of a Nintendo zapper that I could use for my arcade, but I'm gonna be using it for some motion capture just so I can run through and have a prop within my hand. So I did some takes just walking around with the zapper zapper in my hand just to see how it's going to hold up and if we look inside the viewport while I'm walking you can see that it's holding up pretty well now this is all raw I'm not doing any type of cleanup because I'm doing capturing here at the moment but also I wanted to see if I could get a loopable sequence using my walking pad as well so I pulled out my walking pad I proceeded to walk on there inside of Rococo studio there is a treadmill function on there which will put your character in place but with the Rococo preview you can actually do it with just walking normally and for the last one that I wanted to do I really wanted to exaggerate it because I want to put this motion capture on my character. So we are doing an event in Tokyo in which EJ, AKA I design, he designed this character, Piku Piku. That's going to be our mascot for that show. So I wanted to put our motion capture on that character inside of iClone. And so I'm doing an exaggeration walk, kind of like George Jefferson, just swinging my hips back and forth with my arms really exaggerated there. And I'm going to see if I could get a loopable sequence using this walk cycle. Now, anytime I do motion capture, you might notice that I'm always capturing on my laptop and there's a reason for that and that's so I could be more mobile and be out in my living room or even outside or even take this on location because the nice thing about Rococo Studio is all this saves are cloud-based so you don't have to save it or anything you can literally close out Rococo Studio it's going to save it and then once you open it on your desktop everything should be right there so I have Rococo Studio opened up right now and here's a perfect example right there on the front you can see Sam he's out there in the wild so same setup I probably have with your laptop and then bring it home to your desktop but down here this is is where I did all my recording where it says testing ground so I'm going to open this up then over here on the left hand side you can see where I have all my walk cycles so let me start with the zapper one and down here in the lower left hand corner you can see that it's processing it so I'm just going to find a good spot maybe around right here let me start right there and just click and drag this over now let me click on play just going to swing around the character a little bit but you can see that looks pretty good. Even with my fingers in there, you can see I'm pulling the trigger and everything. You can see that the toes are touching the ground as they're supposed to. Every time the foot hits the ground, you can see that it's gonna be a solid color down there. But I'm more impressed with the fingers. Like I'm getting the trigger finger squeezing and everything on there and everything looks really nice. But if we look in the lower right hand corner down here, we have this treadmill button. So I'm actually gonna to go to one of my walking pads. Actually, if I could spell right, this is Walla King pad too. Well, we'll do this one. <laughs> so it looks like that's where I put it in my pocket, somewhere around there. So we'll just say even 19 seconds. So I'm just going to drag this over to about here. Then let me just walk forward a tad bit. Doesn't have to be too long, maybe 25. So we're just going to do this. Now, granted, this isn't going to be a loopable cycle. We'll do that within Real Croco Preview, but I just want to see how the treadmill function works. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hit treadmill. You can see we snap back into place. There we go. So now I'm going to click on play. And you can see our character is walking in place. Let's do it so it's not doing a bouncy camera thing. But yeah, it actually looks pretty nice. Now, of course, it's not going to give us a walk cycle. We're going to have to do that within Rococo Studio. 
but I do like the treadmill function working with my walking pad there. Now, the nice thing about using Rococo Studio with the preview, if you do any type of cleanup here inside the Rococo Studio, all you have to do is exit it out and then it's gonna automatically pick that up once you open up Rococo Preview. Now, it's gonna be able to recognize those files. You don't have to do any type of saving or anything. Like I said before, everything is cloud-based, but there is a way that you wanna do it because Rococo Preview still is experimental. So let me show you exactly what I did to be able to get everything to come over. So so I'm just going to hit pause on here and let's say that we're happy with everything in here. Like I didn't really have to do any cleanup. Everything is just raw. I didn't have to do anything at all. Pretty happy with it. So I'm going to come up here at the walking pad. I'm going to come down here to where it says close scene. So I'm just going to close this out and I'm just going to give us a moment to save before I close this out and then open up Rococo preview. So it should only take a minute or two. And once you open up Rococo preview, you should see everything in here. Now, if it didn't save your files for whatever chance or uploaded to the cloud, if you come up here to the top left where it says refresh scene, if you left click on this, it's going to pull everything back down here off the cloud. And then I'm going to come on this one where it says testing ground, because this is where I did all my experiments. Now let's get into the function that I really want to get into to, which is making a loopable walk cycle. So where I have Wallakin, <laughs> like I said, I can't spell, but walking to, let me come through here and let me see where a good start point is. So even though you don't really need the T-pose, I always just do it anyway, just to force a habit. Let me scroll through here and see where I start walking. So probably about, okay, so about 698. Then let's give myself a good long stretch here. So this is the one where I was doing that exaggerated walk because I do want to put this onto my character. So let's say about 2000-ish. That should give us a good amount of time there. We don't need to do the entire thing because this is going to be a walk cycle. So let's snap it to about there. Now let me click on play. You can see exaggerated walk just like I did when I was capturing it. So, okay, I think that's all good and dandy. So down here, this is gonna be a new function where you can do extra smoothing to it. So I'm gonna hit the plus symbol here. And you can see that we have like these blue wave looking lines here, and that's for auto motion smoothing. And the nice thing about it is you can separate it for the full body, the hands, the body, the upper body or the lower body. Because with body, we're just gonna get upper body and lower body, but not the hands. I didn't wanna do the hands because maybe there's some finger movements in there that didn't want to smooth out. I want those to be a little bit more precise. So I got it back into place. Not sure why it made it smaller. Again, this is preview, so everything here is experimental but I'm going to take my smoothing uh, a little bit more. Now let me click on play. And now we can see that we have a smoother walk cycle on here. Let me actually, I'm going to bring the strength down to about maybe 5.5, just so we don't lose all the exaggeration that I did within my walk there. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks good. So the next thing we want to do now is actually make this a loop cycle. So let me stop this, go back to the beginning. So this blue line is going to represent all of our motion smoothing, which we have at 5.5 here. Down below it, this is going to give us our walk cycle. So I'm going to click on add segment for this. And let's drag this all the way back out. There you go. Somewhere around there. Now where this is new segment, this is what's going to give us our loop right here. So you'll notice that once we added this, on the right hand side, we have apply magic loop. So I'm going to turn this on and now you can see that it turned green. Now this is going to be our segment for how we're going to have our walk. So let me click on play. And you can see our character is not locked into place yet because we didn't turn anything on over here. So let me click on play or pause, go back to the beginning. So right here, I want to click on close loop and then I want to lock it to axis and that's going to lock him into place. So now if I click on play, you can see our character is locked into place here. We're just strutting away. And I'm going to go back to the beginning because I'm going to do it as start of origin which will bring us to zero, zero, zero within our origin point. So I can even do it from the side here just to give us a little bit more perspective. So now I'm going to click on play and we're just going to let this play all the way through. So you can see we're strutting in place and we're almost to the end of our segment here, but watch what happens. You can see that it did a stutter step and that's because if we look over here where we have transition time, we have it at 0 0.10 and this is going to be within seconds here. And this is where you're just going to have to play around with it till you get to a good point. So you might even have to move your endpoint in just a little bit more to get that better transition there because you do want to match your feet beginning to end. So it looked like that one was a little bit better. Let me move this in 
So I brought the beginning in a little bit and I brought the end in a little bit. Let's see if this is going to give us better results. I tried to match the foot. Oh, you know what? That turned out perfectly. So the thing that I did there was I tried to match the foot when it hit the ground. And then at the end point, match that foot when it hit the ground. It then did like a one second transition. And it looks like this is working out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to our mascot character that we made for our Tokyo event. And we're going to bring it into iClum and we're just going to merge everything together. So if I come down here to where we have new segment, just right click. We're going to have a couple of options in which we want to click on export. And it's going to be really simple here. So it's going to give us a few options. Of course, we want to do FBX. And I did a little bit of experimenting with the default, which is going to be your Rococo skeleton and the Mixamo one. I found that I got better results with the Mixamo when I'm using iClone rather than the Rococo. Like there was a slight difference. So I don't think you could go wrong if you use one or the other. But I felt like when I used the Mixamo skeletal rig with iClone, it gave me better results there. So that's what I'm going to stick with for this one. I want to give a big shout out to John Martin over at Real Illusion. He helped me get this set up. Just quickly, we took our mascot that AJ and Tad had created, brought it into AccuRig, and rigged it all up, and then brought it into iClone. And then John helped me get everything white painted so that I could bring everything over from our Coco and just have it be drag and drop. So if I select my character here, and you want to make sure he's selected because we're going to drag and drop our FBX onto our character here. And you know he's selected whenever he has these yellow hash marks all around him. So it's as simple as taking this FBX, left click, drag it over our character. And then I like high frame rate, so I'm going to force it to 60 frames per second, but everything else should be fine. So I'm going to click on convert all. Then after you do that, you should see your character goes into a position of your motion capture. So all you have to do is come down here and click on play. And now we can see that we have our motion capture automatically applied to our character. And that's all we had to do. So if you did want to do any type of cleanup, you can easily do that in iClone. I did do a tutorial on that as well. But I would say for raw data, just brought out of Rococo Studio, brought out of Rococo Preview, dragged and dropped in the iClone on my character. I have to say these aren't bad results. So I hope this video gives you some insights on the updates to Rococo Studio, what's possible with Rococo Preview. And then if you want to do easy motion capture on your character, just bring it over to Act your rig, rig it up, bring it into iClump and just drag and drop from there. If you have any questions, leave me any comments down below. I'll be happy to answer anything to the best of my abilities. Big shout out to Sam, big shout out to John, and I'll catch you in that next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.